Hello and welcome to the Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi here, your host, and we have right now another very special guest with us. He includes one of those leading personalities, the Union Minister of State for Civil Aviation, Culture, and Tourism. He's with us right now on the Quest to talk about many issues that concerns, of course, about his ministry, the government, and his party. I welcome him on the show. Pleasure to have you uh, talking about civil aviation. What's happening now? I mean, we are. I think we are in a phase of transition. We are bringing in new things, and we are trying to maintain old. Where are we? See, Civil Aviation Ministry, we are at number nine in civil aviation business, and our vision is to come to number three in next five years. How great is the challenge? It is the worldwide. Out of four hundred eighty-six air strips we have, we are using only eighty-four. Balance are lying defunct. Mm. We have a vision to add hundred air strips in coming three years. When you say defunct, uh, then challenge is to maintain. Yes, things. yes, that's the challenge we have taken, and that's what we are looking towards making civil aviation industry as a really impactable industry, and per se the combination of civil aviation with tourism and culture, mm. it gives me a liberty to work. In, in a unison, holistic manner. In holistic manner. An integrated manner. Very, very true. So the vision behind these three ministries, I'm a doctor with knife and scissor in okay. hand. So you know how to really do the surgery. Yes. And when I got this uh, opportunity, when I asked Prime Minister that, yes, sir, with what vision I'm here, the vision was very clear. The vision was that the rich heritage and culture of this great country giving mode of tourism and with wings of aviation let's take it to the corners of the world which reminds me that i think you're planning to have muse museums in airports and we are seeing some flashes some in some yes. airports mumbai we saw some so some now little specimen. I, I hail from a remote village and i never imagined that i'll ever be able to have a aircraft ride in my life and it's not me only maybe millions of the people of this country are still waiting or is still having imagination about the whether we'll get a chance How to How do they do that with rising yes. airfare Now it is that's what we are doing we are coming up with a regional connectivity scheme where we propose to add about 100 airports with investment about some 50 to 100 crore rupees to them and we propose that they will be serving to tier 2 and tier 3 cities tier 2 tier 3 cities will be very important from point of international tourism especially and giving connectivity to between the main cities and the tier 2 cities what we proposed and i am sure that this uh, policy will be declared maybe within next two weeks time mm. where we proposed that for a one hour flying time okay. the flying ticket cost will not be more than 2500 rupees it could be less than that but so it will not be more that than middle class which is very middle crucial. class and that middle class is 30 million people i uh, you can you can imagine how much is that kitni badi taakat hai तीस तो करोड़ आम आदमी तक तीस करोड़ नॉट नॉट मिलियन तीस करोड़ लोग हैं वो लोग तीस करोड़ लोगों का 125 करोड़ के देश में वे हमारी सिविल एविएशन इंडस्ट्री को ज्वाइन करेंगे वर्ल्ड इज आल्सो लुकिंग टुवर्ड्स अस दे आर लुकिंग टुवर्ड दैट इंडिया इज द मार्केट द फ्यूचर मार्केट फॉर अस हाउ डू यू लुक एट द एफडीआई चैलेंज बिकॉज़ दैट व्हेन यू से वर्ल्ड देन दिस इज एफडीआई वी आर वी आर ओपनिंग द मार्केट वी आर ओपनिंग द स्काइज आल्सो वी आर डूइंग दैट लुक फॉर दैट दैट वी हैड अ ग्रोथ ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट अबाउट 22% in the air traffic which is our challenge before us to provide the supportive infrastructure for that and for which we have taken initiatives mm -hmm. to the step that worth value worth about 15000 crore rupees we are investing in creation of infrastructure for the new airports mm -hmm. or upgrading of the existing airports so what are the on the, the anvil uh, in terms of new airports which are you looking at for example whenever you talk about new airports i think other dimensions also come in whether you have sometimes land problems on other local issues is now let, let, let's talk of dholera in gujarat we are coming up with a new airport kadappa we have recently come up tirupati we have come up chandigarh we have have come up so these are the few airport odisha we have come up with the new airports now is the raigarh now is the time that we are coming delhi talk of delhi's population is around 2 crores mm. supportive population to this delhi nearby till uh, mathura till uh, meerut mm. till faridabad is around 6 crores more 
So it means Delhi airport is serving to the population of primary and secondary population for almost 8 crores. And how does it handle in terms of infrastructure which you mentioned also? For example, recently we saw with the storm and thunder, suddenly things just go haywire. How are you dealing with sudden crises that comes? See, we are making ourselves available to meet the new challenges. A new ATC tower which is going to be opened within the next about 3-4 months. You must have seen near our Delhi airport that a huge ATC tower is being. And India is among the now four countries which is will be using Gagan. Gagan is a software where at present you have to maintain a heavy distance between the two aircrafts when they fly. Mm -hmm. Like there is a particular distance that you have to maintain that. But now with this coming of this Gagan, they will be flying at a narrower distance. This will be an indigenous uh, software which has been prepared. This And now with that coming of that, we are in that high elite bracket of top four countries. That is again a pride movement for India. We have come up, there were issues, you must have seen so that. So let uh, me ask you, you, you have to uh, ch have challenges like monsoon, then in winter comes you have challenges like how to fly in fogs and you know all those uh, difficult areas in terms of uh, density which really increases. So you know and then we talk about those pilots who should be trained and all the infrastructure when it comes to that. See pilot is a problem. We are not getting trained manpower in the form of pilots. The trainee pilots what are available in good number. Because we could not prepare that backlog because there was a sudden growth of the air traffic and we were not prepared to groom our previous staff. Now we are in the process of, we have almost trainee pilot to the tune of 8,000 to 10,000 people are there. But the trained captains and uh, commanders are not there. So that is again one bottleneck. Initially we had some of the pilots from uh, other countries also, but now we have taken a decision that we will try to create this manpower from our own country when we have everything to do that. So we are doing, we are trying to meet that challenge also. Okay. Another challenge let me ask you here is like and we saw in Vijay Mala's case for example we did not know initially maybe and of course now it came to the parliament and his whole extradition and whether it comes back or not is in question but uh, are we looking at the root cause of things as to where it begins? For example sometimes we see strikes happening in some airline or the other. So are we really looking at what's happening also sometimes in the private sector? There is a sea change in the working style of the airlines operators also. Low cost operators, low budget operators have already started. They have tried to cut down their wings. All haircuts they are planning to do, it, it's in the uh, cost of the food also, cost of manpower, ground handling and, and all those places. And the fuel charge and all that here. Yeah. See, fuel charge you can't restrict. With these new technology of Gagan and all those things, I think we will be able to cut down the fuel charge also. Fuel charge in these bigger planes is to the tune of about 40%. With the coming down the fuel prices in last about two years time or so, there has been a decrease of 18% in the cost of the uh, tickets, which we have definitely been passed on to the customers. But definitely the balance part needs to be because the earlier it was uh, not a very profitable business. And all those air operators mm. who could not maintain low cost operations, like one of you see of uh, Kingfisher, they, they, they met this ill fate. Yeah. So now other airlines operators have become wiser mm. and they have started Do you cutting. think they have learned from the experience? Let, let, let they learn. Let we, because anything happens to, happened with, started with the spice yet also. Exactly, we Again, know the case. It happened so. with the, uh, after Kingfisher, then uh, there were two fewer more, more airlines earlier also who faced the same music. Yeah. But now they have become wiser. And what happens to Air India, our own Air India? And I know that, of course, efforts are being made each time. But the problems that you and I both know about, uh, right from... <laughs> See, what, what a legacy we got. After 12 years, Air India is now in operational profit. Let me compliment you and me both, being Indian, that yes, we have been able to make our national carrier in profits after 12 to 14 years. And what we got in legacy, you know. But let's talk about two years since we are celebrating. Losses, we got in legacy losses of 50,000 crores of the loans and 40,000 crores of cumulative losses. This was the legacy we got it. This is with pride we say that this is the first time we have been able to make last year our losses were to the tune of about 3,000 crores. Operational loss for one year. And this time we are a profit. It means we have earned about 3,010 around 4,000 crore rupees, better than, more than, than the previous years. And what about so the think, whole professional outlook, which I'm sure you're trying to also infuse in terms of, you know, how it's a hospitality, it's a service industry. So, well, sometimes even the Prime Minister feels that 
government has got no business to do business. And in that line, uh, ITTC, the tourism ministry is humming around 16 hotels. We are disinvesting 14 out of 16. Even there was a question, big question bank, whether are we doing the same with the Air India also. Mm. But Air India being our national carrier has got some Some people have emotional value also. of course. And that's sovereign. what they expect also. No, no, they, they, they have sovereign work also. Be it the crisis in Yemen, be it the crisis in Jammu Kashmir floods, be it the crisis in Chennai floods, be it the problems in Nepal, Air India played it a role. Fair. It played a role. We got a crisis call from Yemen that our people are trapped. Our people and other country people are trapped there. there. Within four hours, we could ensure that Indian air, India plane was there to, to rescue the so people. So, can you say after two years that India is really flying high, literally? Yes, because we have got, got a flying prime minister. So, he, we are... <laughs> we'll of course air ask India about is that flying, Air India is flying in pace with the... I'll have to take a very short break out here, but uh, you're still watching the quest and we are still talking to Dr. Mahesh Sharma and don't go away because many, many interesting questions also about his other ministries that we are going to talk about. So don't go away. Welcome back to the quest on Raj Sabha TV. Once again, we are in conversation with Dr. Mahesh Sharma and uh, we are talking to him about range of issues right now here. Uh, talking about culture, what's happening because uh, we saw and this is this is a little sociological aspect also that we saw certain people earlier, not recently, you know, all those things happened with who's returning what award and who's writing what, who's saying what and all that has happened. Within that, maintaining our Indian standards, how we're really following our uh, cultural traditions right now. See, whenever we talk of culture, any, any national international for us, we don't talk of our billion and trillion dollar of reserves. We talk that I have got a rich heritage and culture and that's my strength. And how can we showcase our this culture, rich heritage and culture to the corners of the world? That is our vision. We have about 42 organizations involved deeply into this the literary, the art, the folk, the dance, the music, and everything we take it to the what's in preservation and identification of the artist. Mm. We have created a Are master. we really identifying the right people? Because sometimes the allegation is that, you know, bureaucratic setup gets dominated and the real people don't come up. Well, some, some such allegations will continue to creep in. We have prepared a master portal of nation's artists. And we accept their plea that I am an artist, maybe smaller or bigger. Every smaller has, will be a bigger later on. A master register, we, have tried, we are trying to make it. Second thing, all those organizations which has been created for a purpose, mm -hmm. like Lalit Kala Academy, yeah, those academies. Indira Gandhi National Center of Arts, Nehru Memorial, Asiatic Society, Sangeet Natak Academy, we want to really work in the line for which they have been created. Mm -hmm. Idea is that. And we have and succeeded. And who should be heading it? That's we, the have, and we have succeeded in that. We have been able to remove that anarchy. Earlier, I, I, I was going through the list of the members. Mm. The member was that my qualification, I am a matriculate pass. And I am the member of the youth wing of a political party. That is his qualification. Mm. No. How has uh, it we changed? Have, we have created an IGNC board, which was run by politicians. Sonia Gandhi, Venkat Ramanji, Narsimha Rao, now we have made Ram Bahadur Rai Ji as the chairman and other 20 members are the experts and masters in their field of expertise. That is what is our vision. And we want to, uh, you, you are talking of the, what has happened. So let's take pride in our culture and you know recently this whole Kohinoor thing also came up. So whether we are really preserving our culture, whether we really know about it, where it stands or whether we have to say something, go back. See, our culture was everything, but not definitely declaring my country, what you were talking just now, as intolerant. This is not my culture. No, I mean, uh, whom, I, whom I taking, yeah, making Kohinoor intolerant? Kohinoor topic I'm talking about, which you, you, came up. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the Kohinoor also. Similar thing was about the Kohinoor. Government of India has given a clear vision and a mandate that yes, through all diplomatic means, we will bring back Kohinoor India, you, using our all diplomacies, Kutniti, politics and everything, we'll use our all means, means to bring it back to nation 
and that's our vision. And in tourism, how are we going ahead? Because when we talk about, uh, let's say, many sociological again issues are related to tourism. Are we really seeing an increase in terms of certain spaces? Let's let's talk about Goa, for example. Just suppose we're a very nice place, but sometimes we know the challenges and problems which emerge, and sometimes for certain other means it's being used. And that's where I think uh, there are challenges to make it more pristine, make certain destinations that, that you keep talking about, segments. India is a destination of choice and revisit destination. We have everything what the tourism industry needs. Some people have something, other they are missing with other things. Like Maldives, they have got beach tourism but nothing else. We have 7,500 kilometer of coastal belt with us. 73% of Himalayas is with us. We have the big deserts with us. We have the wildlife with us, the ecotourism, the golf tourism, the mice tourism and the biggest strength of ours is again the medical tourism. But we have not been able to tap the full potential of this. We are sharing less than 1% of our world's tourism. Our great Prime Minister has got a great vision about tourism. He wants to make tourism as an employment the way, generator. The way he's visiting countries, he's actually the ambassador. He is, he is. So many times I'm happy that at least you have labeled him. Otherwise, I, I was expecting this question from you that who will be your brand ambassador. I, I say it could be I'm coming none. to that question on social media. It could be none honestly. but our Prime Minister. No, but co coming to this brand ambassador thing, recently with Atithi Deobhav, you had she problems. Is, Who is going is. to be the real brand ambassador for Incredible India? This, 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 this is not question before us. Anybody who is the face of India, who is the who has taken India, Indianism to the new heights. You've not finalized our, yet. Is our brand ambassador. You've not finalized. You've already yet. finalized. 125 crore people of this country finalized that. They made Narendra Modi as our brand ambassador, as an for, icon. For, for our country, for the ministry, I'm talking Well, about. country and, and ministry are not different. So, <laughs> so, so has, do you think, I'm coming to a broader question and I'm not really going to specific because channels have talked about, is that do we have then problems identifying people when we identify people from the culture uh, industry or from the film industry? And you know the, the people I'm talking about, the personalities I'm talking about, and they come into question as to uh, whether they are into some other charge or not, you know? So, for example, you know that channels have been talking about your government celebration, how Amitabh Bachchan's question came up. See, Amitabh Bachchan's contribution to this film industry, tourism, the nation's pride has been tremendous. Now, question is, suppose a question mark comes on him. He has not been allegated that, allegation has been there, but he has not been finalized by the court of law that he is the culprit process is going on and till that time what he is doing he is coming for few minutes for a cause of Beti Bachao and Beti Padhao. So he is doing it as a national work. The people who are trying to find negativity into this they are talking of the negativity. Why do not they talk that even if his name has come in some of the Panama or any, anywhere how does it matter if he is talking good about the Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao Yuzna and this is at primarily it is an allegation. Let it be proved in the court of law. So till that time, do you think he, he, is, do you think he, culture, he will stop? cinema, these kind of softer aspects which were never touched by politics, I mean, do you think there should be a political element to all these things? That's what saddens maybe and hurts. Well, I think this should be kept different because there are two different cup of tea. The culture, then the politics and the artists. Most of the times these artists are not involved, in, but after working in the field of their expertise in the art, then they join politics. Nothing wrong in that also. So, so, so let me talk to you about an integrated approach and which involves all the ministry, also the government's approach is that how you're really mixing, let's say, um, you know, increasing tourists here, increasing tourism, uh, also the culture, the heritage and the aviation, mixing it into a holistic kind of exercise for India to develop actually. So well, for example, are... how looking at hotel industry, giving them incentives, maybe they, when they talk about it and how we're looking at culture, the artists, the, how they should be promoted. And at the same time, how do we really look at the external uh, inflow here? See, see tourism is a multi-prong. We need to have a railways with us. We need to have shipping industry with us. We have to have road and transport business with us. We have to have hotel industry with us. We have to have restaurants and this business with us. The cleanliness drive, the safety, the um, infrastructure for this uh, safety devices. Any new plans that so, you want to talk about? Yes, yes. We have taken initiatives. The four pillars of tourism, the cleanliness, we have linked up with the Prime Minister's initiative of Clean India, the safety, 
that's the first time experiment which we have come in India. Not anywhere in the world wide. If you go to Spain, if you go to Belgium, maybe you will not get anybody to chalk talk in your language. Yes, in India we have created a place with helpline 1363. Is it if one you are, you've been talking about? Yes, it? please go and use it today in 12 languages. You are a Japanese, you are a Chinese, you are a Russian. Talk in the language, you will get an answer in your language. But still we have problems that foreigners come. I mean, I'm not talking about another issue which is going on with some of our African brothers and sisters. But, you know, sometimes when they come, they don't find it such a convenient atmosphere. Well, you are right also that any such event happens with any, and especially the foreigner guest of ours. We are tuned with the Atiti Devo Bhav culture. But any mishappening happens, it takes us back years together to the tourism aspect. Sometimes we are over-focused. And let me request you as a media person also that declaring India unclean, declaring India unsafe, declaring India intolerant. Some people have make it as a hobby that they say that if I declare India as an intolerant country, maybe I'll be showcased or maybe my voice will be picked up. No, but we are not. I went to a South African country. I wanted to have a post-dinner walk. But such incident I, happens I with stopped. the Congolese. I, I'm, talking of, I'm talking of a South African country. At 9 p.m., I wanted to have a post-dinner walk. I was stopped. It is not safe to walk. I was wanted to have a morning walk at 6 a.m. in the hotel. I was stopped by the hotel security people. Sir, you cannot go beyond this. Because it is not safe. And we call our India unsafe. Sporadic events happen. They should not happen. Have happened. But... But you cannot say but India is unsafe. For example, you know, though somebody can consider it a small thing, but you know, somebody was writing some Urdu couplets on a wall and they, there were you know, rumours or news that you know, they were stopped. So, I mean, whether people have those expressions right now and they can come out with this, whether there is an artistic freedom, we are talking about that also. See, there cannot be a more democratic and freedom of ideas place than India. Even in other so-called developed countries of USA and other, they will not even permit that much so-called democracy over here. Because there is a recent debate which happened also in Bharat Mata Ki Jai. So, you know, but how People we take right pride to, in our no, country. But, but, but my question is, under cover of this, Abhivyakti Ki Ajati, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, that should not be beyond a limit. I may abuse my father. I may abuse my motherland. But is that the freedom of a, a voice? And how and what is the limit behind that? There should be certain guidelines for this th these things also. And these are so that, this is, is the call of the is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Somebody can question, I'm abusing my father. But it is not in my culture to even listen that what to talk of doing so. So after two years and that we are wrapping up, how are you looking at India that is going to be tomorrow's India? 67, 68 years of independence. The people of this country, the youth of this country, the downtrodden people of this country expected a lot. The governance of that time could not deliver. Now is a government, a leader, a mass leader, a visionary leader who has brought India's respect, Indians' respect, Indianism's respect in the eyes of the world. And now we are called as a respected country in and the are, eyes of others. Are you satisfied others. after two years in terms of government when one, one is asking? I am a part of that. I, I, it's my pleasure. In my lifetime, I had a visionary prime minister under whose guidance I have a um, chance to work. His only vision is to keep the masses of this country, the persons standing on the last of that. But you are now halfway mark. You have to work hard. Maybe. Well, it is only two years. We have been given five years mandate. We are supposed to give our report card to the people of this country at the end of the five years. But the two years report card is quite good, quite tasty. You are happy. Hilarious. No doubt about that. That the impact of this initiative, what has been taken. Sick. I never imagined a Chuggi Wala person going to a bank. Crores of people have got their bank accounts. They have deposited 35,000 crore rupees in the bank accounts. They have got insurance. They have got crop insurance. They have got Jandhan Yojana, Mudra Yojana. All these Yojanas are for whom? They are not for Ambani's and Adani's. 
therefore the common man One of this country so. and it should reach where it should actually and that's what we really hope and uh, through your conversation of course we see that ray but how much it really really reaches to the right kind of people and sections we'll have to really look no, at the that ball has what started also. rolling direct transfer of any sort of subsidy whether manarega to the account holder the middlemans are now out the corruption process what used to be a tagline in the morning newspapers to that media channels now that phase is over now we are heading towards let's the, keep an the, eye on the that sir but uh, thanks a lot for talking to us on raj sabha tv we will continue to look at whatever you saying and whatever the country actually is offering us and through you that we have to really walk the talk as they say so thank you so much really? once again Namaskar. and that was dr mahesh sharma talking to us uh, on range of issues as we are ushering in another year maybe and another uh, leap that this comment of course is taking forward uh, we thank you for watching this particular edition of the question raj sabha tv thank you once again namaskar and bye bye